on your Garmin venue it is possible that you want to do multiple sports and in this video I will show you how to start a sport and how to edit all of your sport, sport watch so you can have uh, the information you want on your watch and even uh, enable or disable some alerts. So let's start with this. Uh, the first thing you will want to do is to press the upper button to reach that uh, sport menu. Uh, on this first page, the first time you will press on it, the watch will ask you to select the sport that you want to practice. Uh, that's what I did uh, with that. So I want to do running, biking and walking. Uh, if someday you want to do some other sport, this is your favorites. Uh, you can come down and press those four button and select another sport from that list. Uh, so you just press it and you will be asked if you want to move it to the favorite or just do it one time. So actually let's do walking. So when you select the sport you will uh, be asked to wait for GPS and you will have this gray bar on which there will be a green line that will uh, fill up uh, when you wait. Uh, you can wait for the GPS. Personally, when I uh, want to start a sport, I just select the sport, I hit start, and the GPS eventually connect to the satellite. So I, ne I never wait. Uh, the connection when I go outside is very quick. I, I don't wait for this. You just press the start button and it start. Then uh, you can uh, if you want to, to add some, uh, if you want to edit your sport mode, uh, you will want to swipe up and go on settings. From here you have, uh, we will go in order. The first one is the data screens. I accidentally hit alerts, data screens. So you will see it just like that. There is four uh, data screen. There is, there is a screen one, two, three, and the HR gauge. Uh, as you can see, the screen two and three can be disabled if you just press back, back. If you press on the side here, they can be disabled. Um, yep, you cannot add another screen, but you can enable or disable those one. Actually, I try to press this, but it does select this. I hate touch screen. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, if I want to modify this, I will go into screen one and you will have the option of the layout. The layout will let you choose if you, you want to have three data field, two or just one. Actually, I think that if you move from one to two or three, none of the information is bigger or smaller so why not go to three just to have more information on the watch and then you can edit the data fields so from here you will see on this one i have the editing lap step and the average speed but if i don't want the editing and i want i don't know the timer feel and i want the timer well now i have the timer lap step and average speed. Uh, so we will see the definition of all of them. So when you want to modify one of them, you just hit it and then you will have to uh, choose a field uh, because all of the information are separate into different fields. So if we go into timer fields, we're going to have, for example, timer. So the time since the beginning of the activity. Uh, the lap timer, so when you are into an activity and you press the lower button, this will record a lap. So if, for example, you do a circuit, a round circuit, and you pass several times at the same place and you want to know the time of your actual lap, you will press that button every time you will reach the same spot, the start line, for example. And uh, when you press that button, well, this, is, this will be the timer of the lap. So it will reset the timer every time you will press that button. And then we've got the last lap time. So when you finish it, you press this button and it, it will tell you what was your last lap time. The average lap time will be the average of every lap. And the elapsed time is not the same as 
the timer. The timer is, as I told you, the time since the beginning of the activity. But if you are into a multi-sport mode, so for example, you do cycling and then when you uh, arrive at some destination, you switch for uh, running or cycling, you will switch sport. Well, in that case, the elapsed time will be the time since the beginning of the cycling. So if you are running after cycling, it will tell you the time since the beginning of your very first activity, while the timer will tell you the time since the beginning of your second activity. Then in distance field, we've got uh, the distance. So the distance in kilometer or miles, depending of where you are into the world. And then uh, the lap distance, again, it's the same principle and last lap distance. And then we've got the pace field. So your pace, your average pace, the lap pace and the last lap pace. Again, same thing. And then we've got speed fields. So speed fields. So your speed, average speed, lap speed, last lap speed, and maximum speed. Uh, no need explanation for that. Your cadence speed, so your actual cadence, average cadence, lap cadence, and last lap cadence, exactly the same thing. Uh, the temperature, so the actual temperature, and the maximum and minimum temperature in the last 24 hour. And finally, on other fields, we're going to find the calories burned since the beginning of the activity, the number of laps you have done, the number of steps you have walked, uh, your lap step, and the sunrise and sunset time, the actual time of the day, and finally the heading, which is the direction in which you are going, so north, uh, south, east, west. Uh, but this one will be expressed as we have seen earlier in degrees so uh, zero will be north 90 will be east 190 will be west and you understand and yeah that's for the uh, data fields then we will see the other information that we can see here we're gonna go back here up to see data screens that's what we have just seen and then you got alerts so if we go into alerts what it is we can add a new alarm custom alert you can have reminders to uh, remind you to drink eat go home or turn around for example so if you are someone that forget to uh, drink you can set uh, distance so maybe at every two kilometer and a quarter uh, got a reminder to drink maybe and maybe that uh, you have bring some lunch and let's say that after uh, 10 kilometers you want to have a reminder to eat maybe 10 kilometers i want to eat so i'm gonna have a reminder about this uh, you can have a reminder for your heart rate so let's say that um you don't want your heart to go too strong. Uh, let's I'm gonna say zone four, or you can you can set uh, the number you want. So maybe you know that your heart cannot go over 160. So you're gonna you want to have a reminder at 150 to remind you to remind you that hey, don't go too strong, and maybe you want to have a lower alert. Uh, if you don't want to go under the zone 2, for example, so at 115, it will tell you, hey, work harder. And if you go at 150, it will tell you, watch out, relax. And what do we have else? Uh, you can have, uh, you can set uh, the same principle for uh, your pace, um, calories if you want to have a reminder so if you want to have target of burning i don't know uh nine nine hundred nine hundred and eighty three calories well you're gonna have a reminder when you have reached that target so that's the alerts and then on every sport mode, you will realize that there is that feature that is always enabled by default and it is auto lap. Uh, personally, I think it is annoying. Uh, actually, this is on the walk, uh, on the walk sport. So this will make 
that every kilometer I walk, I will have that auto lap. So my watch will do and I will see uh, how much time in how much time I did that first kilometer and second and third and, and whatsoever. So I will I always disable uh, that auto lap. But if it's something that you want to have, well, it's there. And if you want to change the distance after which it happened, well, you can you can change it just right here. Then you've got the auto pose. So if uh, you want that the watch stop recording automatically your activity when you stop somewhere, the, this is something you can enable. Actually, I, I don't want this, so I keep it to off. You also have the auto scroll. Uh, if you want to, so you have see there. You have seen there is three screen of info. If you, and if you want to scroll between all of them. You can uh, do it slowly, in medium or fast. Uh, that's up to you. I will leave it to off. Otherwise, you will have to scroll with your finger up and down to go from a window to another. And finally, you can select the GPS you want to connect to. Actually, don't touch this option if you don't need to. If you have no trouble, don't touch it. And yeah, that's pretty much that's it. Once you are done editing your activity, you can press the back button to return to that page. And when you want to start your activity, you will press the start button just right here. And your activity is now started. When you are done, you will press again on the start stop button. It will stop. It will tell you the distance you have uh, walk and those kind of thing. If you want to record this uh, activity to uh, Garmin Connect, you will uh, swipe up. And if you don't want to save it, you will swipe down. And you will have to do it a second time when you want to discard the activity just by security. And that's it. It's pretty much that's it. So. I hope this video will have will have helped you to set up and understand how work that uh, sport mode. So this is it. Thank you for watching. I hope it helps. If yes, please smash the like button. If you are planning to buy this watch, you can see my link in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can find me back easily next time you need help. If you want to see my other tutorial about this watch, you can see my playlist just right here. And you can also find me on my main channel just right there. Thank you for watching. Take care. <laughs> see ya.